everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in again. In the last video, we, we enhanced the UI a little bit and uh, actually referenced the UI from code and got a simple log statement uh, to print out when the user clicks the button. Uh, but if we look at the UI here, it's pretty barren. There's not a lot of, um, there's no way for the user, you know, yourself to input anything into the screen or, you know, into the system of the application itself. So, um, we're actually going to change that here by adding a field called an edit text. Um, we're going to add this to the bottom of the screen alongside this button here um, to kind of give the user uh, a field that they can edit with, you know, text. Um, and then upon this button click, we'll do something with that text. Uh, so we're going to, I'm actually going to set the width to zero dp because we're going to work with our constraints. We're going to use wrap content here. Um, and we're going to give it an ID of, uh, let's just say input edit text. Um, and then we're going to set up our constraints here. So we're going to do start uh, to start of, let's have it align with the image view here, um, just to keep it 16 away from the, uh, the parent and to kind of keep this uh, vertical line that we have going um, all the way down the entire screen. We're going to now constrain the end to the start of this bottom button. So now you can see here it takes up you know this entire distance which is very nice. Uh, and then we're going to constrain the bottom to the bottom of the parent. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, so it looks a little funky because it's off center from that. So let's just do the bottom to the bottom of the bottom button. And now at this point, uh, it, it kind of looks like these two things are, um, you know, almost one particular field. Um, at least one area that the user can interact with the screen. So we're going to put a little margin end here and say 40p. That pushes it away from the button a tiny bit just to kind of you know, make it look clean. Um, and then we're going to add something in here called the hint. And the hint is, um, as you're seeing it fill in in the preview over here, it's text that appears in the, the view, but it actually like isn't there. You know, if you were to try to fetch the text from this uh, view programmatically, it would just be an empty string. It wouldn't actually have enter some text in it. Um, it would, uh, that's kind of just like a helper uh, text that's there for the user. So it, it might be something, you know, like in, in practice you would say, you know, username, right, or email, or something along those lines. So I'm just going to back up and do enter some text. Um, and then we're actually going to change a little bit here what this button does. So instead of logging this, um, did I give it an ID? I did, and put edit text. Instead of just logging nothing in here, we're actually gonna do something with that view that we just added. Um, so, in order to get that view, I'm going to say uh, val input edit text of type edit text equals find view by ID, r.id.input dot dot edit text. Again, command click in. It'll bring you into the layout file referencing, and so we're looking at that particular view. So with that in mind, uh, when they click the button, we can do something with this. So let's say uh, the, the, the input is going to be input edit text. Um, what is it called? Dot, get, uh, dot text. Uh, to string, and then we're actually just going to log that. Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yeah, it is. It is called text, right? Because it would be. Yeah. Okay. So it's not a. It's not a nullable field. Um, but yeah, if we command click into it, we can see what we're doing here, um, calling super.get text on it and 
I'm going to return that if everything's all good. So we'll go ahead and log that to our to our output, and uh, we'll see what it looks like. So we have enter some text here, and we're just going to say, "Hey, man." We're going to click, and as you can see here, the log says, "Hey, man." And as we delete things uh, and do it again, we now we're kind of in sync. And let's see what happens here. Oh, take a look at that. That is flat out not logging anything. Uh, okay, we're going to go on this journey together for a hot second. Oh, so text must be null here, and so we're returning null. But then we're calling to string on a on a string. So I mean, sorry, on a, on a null object. So that should kind of all right. Perfect opportunity to hit a breakpoint. First introduction to breakpoint. So this little thing here, attach the debugger. Um, you can attach the debugger to an instance that's already running and assuming you haven't changed any lines of code since the last time it ran uh, you'll actually be able to hit this breakpoint so if we click here uh, now we're, we're we're at this line of code and we can actually debug things so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this use this plus sign to uh, add a new variable that we're going to evaluate and run this right here so interesting it's actually not null it's empty. So that means that this log function whenever it's given an empty message huh, it doesn't log. Interesting. I mean I guess that makes sense because you're just gonna like log empty. Um, but okay. All right, so uh, unintended uh, like mini tutorial, but that's how you can kind of add um, you know the debugger to an, uh, to a running process. Oh, I killed it, sorry. Uh, to a running process and actually step through the code at that point. Uh, and you can uh, you know we'll, we'll dive further into that at some later point when there's uh, a greater reason to. Uh, but for now, um, we just kind of stumbled across that. So again, if, uh, I mean, we saw this, but we put some text in and log it. It's uh, it's there. Let's try with the space. Yeah, so it actually logs the space. It just doesn't like logging an empty string. All right, I guess this function's smart enough to know not to do that. Um, so very interesting, very simple stuff here, right? We have the edit text. Uh, we're able to fetch the edit text, or the text from the edit text using this get text method. However, it actually returns an editable. Uh, it does not return a string, and so that is the reason why we end up having to call to string on it if we want uh, mm -hmm. to get, you know, a valid um, uh, instance of a string instead of instance of an editable. Uh, and we learned something together about the log statement. Um, what I would like to show you, though, is hopefully, you know, you might have seen it before, but something called a toast in Android. Um, so I will explain it as we do it, um, but it's a it's like a system UI mini dialog message kind of thing that you can do, um, and and this is how you do it. So you invoke this uh, static function here, uh, make text on the toast object, and uh, pass in a few parameters. So actually, this is our first instance where we're dealing with context. And um, again, I don't want to dive too deep into that, but um, each activity has its own context and anything that is inside of the activity, uh, in this case, any of the views in this activity, uh, their context is going to be the activity. So when I mentioned that um, this onclick listener is a function that gets invoked, and it passes in, you can see here in the editor, the view that uh, was actually clicked. 
that is so you can use it to your advantage and actually say it.context. And so if you, uh, you, you take a look at this uh, variable here, and it's actually referencing the get context function of the view class under the hood, and you can see here it actually returns a context. So this, in this case, will actually be the main activity because the context that this button is in is that it exists inside this activity. Um, for now, I guess that's all you need to know, uh, but the context is one of uh, the most frequently used or uh, discussed topics in Android um, and is definitely uh, important to understand what has context, what does not have context, what the difference between you know, um, an activity versus an application context is, uh, etc. So um, anyway, moving on, we have a few more fields that we need to fill out here. Uh, also, by the way, if you're ever stuck and wondering, oh, what else is in this uh, you know, well, what else does this function need? If you type command P while within the, uh, the parentheses, it'll bring up this little balloon showing you the different functions that you actually can invoke and uh, what they need, you know, or what the parameters are. Um, so in this case, we're actually going to toast the input and then for duration, uh, again, this is just a static uh, integer on the toast class itself um, and so we'll do short and then at the end you just call show um, definitely easier to uh, show you what happens and maybe you're familiar with this UI element but uh, it is system based hey I am in a toast and if we see down here is actually a little balloon that kind of comes up and you know kind of just pops above the UI hey I'm in a toast uh, this is a super useful tactic for you know displaying a little bit of information that doesn't really belong anywhere but you kind of just want to notify the user of something maybe they hit an error state maybe they uh, you know made it made changes to something and and saved it or uh, you know, you kind of want to give feedback to the user after them performing an action. The toast is a very, um, you know, easy, simple way to do that. Uh, I didn't mean to do that, but since we're on the topic of simple and easy ways to do this, there is a new and improved version of the toast, and it's called the snack bar, and it follows a very similar pattern. Uh, so it has a make function. In this case, it actually just requires a view. And for that reason, uh, uh, sorry, just from the view, you can get the context as you see here. So it just makes life a little bit easier on the developer. Um, and, you know, again, just follows the same input basically as the, uh, um, the toast does. And short, is it also called show? Yeah, it is. Um, so I'm just going to show you the difference here. These are this is, this is basically just the new wave version of a toast, uh, but it actually has a few things that are kind of cool. So I'm just gonna show you uh, at least one of them right now. Um, so I'm gonna comment this line of code out. I'm actually gonna do that by holding command and hitting the uh, forward slash uh, button. Uh, and so as if you were to write a particular comment, if you actually hold uh, command while doing that, it'll just comment out the entire line. You can do that over multiple lines. Um, see how two lines are highlighted, and since these ones are already commented out, they will actually uh, like remove the comments. So it's just something you can toggle between. So just a couple of tricks in the IDE that I'm trying to um, show you guys as we go along, so that so that things don't happen magically for you, and you kind of understand where they're coming from, and then you know little shortcuts and whatnot that um, could be helpful. So again. Uh, now I'm in the snack, oh, come on. Uh, snack bar. Interesting. Uh, so you can immediately see the difference in the UI here. Um, and if you actually remember when we did, when we had this keyboard open and we did a toast, the toast appeared down here, whereas this one is actually appearing up here. So this snack bar actually uh, like respects the constraint uh, layouts bounds that it has 
whereas the toast kind of just like always sits at the bottom of the screen um, because, uh, you know, I mean, it was just, that's how it was built a, a long time ago and uh, they stuck with it. And so the snack bar actually kind of respects uh, the soft keyboard, they call it there. But if we're here, you can see it actually has a bit nicer look to it. Um, and, you know, you may have seen it in, let's say, the Gmail app where you end up archiving something or deleting something and there's a little balloon that comes up and it says, you know, so-and-so was deleted or this action was done and then there's a little undo button that would exist right here. So you can actually add actions to this. Uh, you can modify the way that looks, the different colors to uh, the text, the background, the undo button, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. So there's, there's a lot more power that you can do with a snack bar. And so it's kind of, um, you know, the toast on steroids where you get the ability to um, provide input to the, or, or feedback to the user. And then in certain cases where it makes sense, you know, maybe an undo button or, um, I don't know, some other kind of supplementary action that they can perform at that moment in time that, uh, uh, you know, will just help your overall UX, the overall user experience. So, um, we kind of got sidetracked by the debugger at first, uh, and then I ran into the toast and snack bar idea on the fly. So um, uh, I guess, you know, these don't really count too, too much as part of the layout, but it's an appropriate uh, usage of them and whatnot. So, um, you know, again, we just use the very simple uh, find view by ID function to actually reference another UI element um, and then on click of that listener, we actually did something with what's uh, in our UI element. And let's see. Yeah, so we got a beautiful snack bar of absolutely nothing when there's nothing in there. So, so we don't have uh, many or any error checking or handling or any of that kind of stuff. But this could be a reasonable use case for it. Um, and you know what? It'll be the last thing we do. Uh, I'm just going to remove this, but I'm just going to say here. If input is empty, then we're going to return at set on click listener. This is just kind of um, uh, another one of those Kotlin syntax things because you could possibly have this, you know, embedded in a for loop or something, and and you don't want to actually just like return out of the entire for loop. You just want to return back to like you know terminating this function call kind of thing. Um, so. You know, it's uh, it'll make more sense when we have nested uh, lambda functions. But for now, um, just know that either the return at set, yeah. So it because it, it's going to try to return from the function itself, which has no return type. So uh, return at set on click listener tells it basically like short circuit this block of code that's trying to run. And so you saw the first one that came up, and then if uh, if we click it, you see that there's absolutely nothing that pops up. So a little primitive error handling in there as well. So um, a little bit of a mashup of uh, a video, but um, hopefully now you can kind of see how we're going to start to use a little bit of user input um, to maybe fuel the rest of the screen or change something about the screen or something along those lines. And also the fact that when we click this, um, you know, our, our entire screen kind of scrolls up uh, with the uh, keyboard that comes out. So, uh, you know, we, we lose sight of some of these other, um, you know, important UI elements. So we will definitely fix that in the future. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'd like to wrap it up here. So thank you for uh, listening, watching, paying attention. Hopefully you learned something about the edit text field and, um, you know, just kind of furthering the interactivity of this UI. So I'll catch you in the next one where we'll build on that a little further.